Yo, it's Perp, back with another video. Just got done watching episode 6 of season 1 of Raising Canaan. Yes, Raising Canaan is back. They took like a week off, but I'm glad they're back because there's a lot to talk about in this episode. But before I dive into everything in this episode, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If this is the first time you've ever checked out one of my power videos, Check out in the link in the description below for all my other power content. Consider subscribing. Follow me on Twitter at PerpMinder420 as well. Now, this episode starts off, we see Rock just really getting straight to business, you know, checking out the housing that she, you know, purchased. Having a little issue with the uh, the inspector, you know, the, uh, the guy that's kind of um, make sure you don't mess with anything really is aggressive towards rock and you know this guy is a total total creep and rock says you know what let's talk about this later tonight i'll come to you we'll get back to that very shortly while kanan and famous are out you know passing out flyers for this event going down to the club you have howard um tracking down the doctor to ask like if i have a son will that work um Will this whole surgery be able to be a thing? Which I don't know how Howard's going to go about this and go up to Kanan and tell him, like, I'm your father. I need bone marrow to help save my life. I just don't think that's going to go over well. We just got to wait and see. Then we go to the club where they're uh, hosting this event, this venue, uh, we really start to see the business side of Lulu in this and how, you know, everybody's kind of asking for money that just how much everything costs. Um, but you could tell that Lulu kind of likes having somewhat of his own control. And that seems to be a theme with just Lulu and Marvin's character as, you know, they want to kind of do their own thing. But Rock is always kind of breathing down their neck to, you know, stick to what, uh, stick to business, stick to the family business type thing. And, you know, don't get distracted with these other things that really don't matter because none of this stuff matters to rock. She just wants to, um, be in control, you know, have power once again, speaking of characters stepping up, you have Bert, I guess you can call, uh, the cop that was with Howard. That was, you know, the rookie, has to kind of fill those shoes now and it's time to kind of step up because Howard's kind of MIA at the moment, which I don't know how that's going to uh, play out. So Lulu goes to Unique and Unique's kind of like, yo, why are you even here? We're beefing. And I really like Joey Badass playing this villain um, slash uh, street dealer. Like he, he just, he plays this role very perfectly and he pretty much, there's a lot of clues, a lot of hints in what, you know, Unique said in this whole conversation between him and Lulu that Lulu should have kind of saw this as a red flag because Lulu initially went over there just to tell Unique, yo, I don't want no problems at this event. I want this to go smooth. He doesn't want any type of drugs being moved through the, uh, the club. Very ghost-like. Keep that in mind. Very ghost-like. Then when the Unique leaves, Scrappy and I forget what old boy's name was, uh, Unique's homie, says, tell, and then Unique tells them, you know, I want y'all to go to that club tonight and just light it the fuck up. We don't know who, but that's what they were said to do, which, you know, leads into very some very interesting things the way this uh, episode ends. Then we get a scene of Kaden getting his hair cut by Rock. They're having a conversation. And this is where Rock kind of finds out who bailed out Kanan. And it was Symphony. And this, she doesn't really like this. This kind of sets her off. And Kanan tries to tell her, like, yo, it's all me. Don't blame him. And, you know, he just... He, he doesn't... She, she doesn't like it when people get in between her and her son's business and stuff, which, you know, that's great. And I don't, people that don't have kids shouldn't really, um, 
you know, get involved with certain situations. I could, I get it, but Symphony really didn't mean no harm. I feel like that was the best bet for, uh, for him at that time, but it is what it is. She went off. We'll get into that uh, a little bit later into this review. Going over to Jukebox, she's sitting there pretty depressed, down, watching Die Hard. I think that was Die Hard that she was watching. Then she gets a knock at the door, ends up being Nicole, and, you know, she starts to kind of get out of it because she just feels really uh, sad just with the whole events with Nicole and her parents and stuff kind of shitting on her. But they kind of start to have this conversation and stuff about race once again. You know, the difference between this situation and that situation. And I I'm cool with it. They don't try to beat you over the head with it. You know, that stuff still happens to this day. Um, I'm wondering how Marvin's going to act to, you know, Jukebox being uh, a lesbian. You know, I'm, I'm curious. Speaking of which, you have Rock having a sit down with Marvin and... Lulu trying to work out this business because the product is drying up. You know, it seems that that rock has been cut off. She doesn't know why. We'll get to that. Marvin le leaves the house, you know what I'm saying? But Kanan stops to kind of offer this kind of business deal, I guess. There's this area that's pretty neutral. It's not controlled by rock. It's not controlled by you know, unique. So it's a perfect window for Marvin to kind of just do his own thing and expand. Ex speaking of which, Rock goes to the plug to kind of figure out what's the deal. Why is she being cut off? Doesn't really give her an answer. It just says, you know, our business is done, which leads Rock to go back to one of the stores that she owns, sees that the the wife of the stone owner's face is beaten up. And I feel like that's going to come back into play probably in the next episode or so. But she says, let me know where I can find your cousin. I don't know who her cousin is, but she needs to look for another plug. That person might show up um, in season two. Maybe we'll see this character by the end of this season i don't know that's another thing that they're going to set up for in the future anyways going back to bert she finds uh she sees jukebox out there and i feel like this is where we're gonna get uh how jukebox becomes a cop and she's gonna have a relationship of some sort with this cop maybe we'll see let me know how you guys feel about that so now it is showtime it's the big night you know everybody's getting ready you know Kanan's putting on his best rock's putting on her best you know um you got the shooters outside waiting you know scrappy and unique's dude waiting trying to get into the club burke's out there just just observing you know uh jukebox is really nervous she starts to throw up uh, you got this fake Keith Sweat, Bobby Brown, dude on stage. Shit was hilarious. If you know, you know. But before we get into the ending of this episode, Rock goes to confront the inspector or the guy that was looking over the house. And she wanted this to be just strictly business. This guy literally forces himself on her almost like you know what I'm saying, takes advantage of Rock, but Rock is able to, like, literally smack this dude over the head with a hammer to, to get him off her. And Marvin has to pretty much clean up the the rest. Beats this dude up, mind you, and puts him into the wall, which, <laughs> that's hilarious. And it's just, man, I, I really want to see Marvin kind of do his own thing. I hope he sticks around for a while throughout the series because i really am enjoying the interactions we're getting with his character now back to jukebox because she's kind of stuck in the bathroom feeling nervous doesn't really want to come out kanan is the only one that can really talk her out of the bathroom pretty much says i'm sorry apologizes for what he said to her 
gives her a really good pep talk to help her boost her confidence and to get there, get out there on stage and just straight kill it and represent for Southside. That was really cool. Now, let's get to the scene where Rock right now is really upset, runs into Symphony and they kind of have uh, a falling out. You know, it, it. I, I think they'll be back together. I just feel like Rock is going through a lot of emotion because of her whole situation being attacked by that creepy ass dude um i'm glad he's gone but man it's just i, I feel like i said i feel like th that's gonna be temporary we have another situation that pops up right outside of the club where this brooklyn dude tries to get just force his way in and lulu has to come out in and just kind of um settle the whole situation while rock uh, before Rock leaves out, you know, she tells Lulu, I'm proud of you. But, you know, when tomorrow comes, it's back to business. This whole thing is over with. Also tells Burke that tells Burke about something about Howard. I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank exactly what her wordings were. But I feel like Burke is going to kind of approach Howard or confront Howard about that. And maybe Howard will tell that you know Kanan is my actual son which is definitely going to change a lot of things if that gets out now we're getting back into the club got that dusty brooklyn dude trying to push up on uh lulu's girl lulu girl lulu's girl's not having it that's famous his sister i think her name was jess correct me if i'm wrong and we we kind of find out because i was always kind of uh skeptical about her character and how loyal she was to lulu but you know, she's not having it. The guy tries to push up on uh, Jukebox's girl, Nicole, and she's not really having it. It takes Jess to kind of come in between them and says, yo, get the hell out of here. You know what I'm saying? Even confronts Crown like, yo, you got to control your guests and stuff. They're really not like they're not being respectful at all. And he kind of shrugs it off, which I feel like Crown is going to get himself into trouble with Lulu somewhere down the line um he rolls up a blunt of some shit and nicole takes a hit which i i think that's a that's going to be a bad sign of her going down a dark path i don't know where it's going to lead but i don't know how, how do y'all feel about that whole situation let me know while this is all going on everybody's on stage getting introduced you know you have scrappy and unique scott uh uh foot soldier whatever you want to call them you know uh they find a way inside the club because they realize they can't go through the front because they're checking people for weapons and stuff like that and old boy lets them know let scrappy know like we're we're going to hit lulu this is going to be his last night you know what i'm saying also what i liked about this where 50 Cent comes in with his narration, you know, while, while Famous is performing. This is kind of where, you know, the whole fake it till you make it thing kind of becomes a, a real thing in hip hop where you'll have rappers rapping about things that they've never done in real life. And I really like that they put that in there. And I'm wondering how that's going to um, play up with Famous's character, because I feel like even Famous is kind of overstepping his boundaries a little bit kind of being a little bit disrespectful so i don't know let me know how you guys feel about that as well so as lulu is just chilling the crowd and jukebox and famous are doing their thing uh lulu obviously sees a red flag and sees one of unique's boys and he starts a fight to kind of have everybody scramble because if he didn't do that in that moment i think lulu would have definitely been dead we get a scene of marvin kind of meeting up with his own crew taking kanan's advice the guy that was with the unique um confront scrappy saying like we knew you was gonna uh flip on us get a montage of you know howard thinking about kanan Rock just thinking about just the situation of her almost being, you know what I mean, sexually assaulted. Kanan goes to Deneva, goes to her house, gets some cakes. 
you know, famous also kind of gets his own, you know, uh, his own little celebration. Everybody's kind of just having a happy moment. Not everybody, like I said, rocks kind of going through things. Here's a gunshot or people just being, um, something being dropped outside the house wakes everybody up and it happens to be scrappy. And man, this episode had a lot. I hope I was able to cover everything. Let me know how you guys feel about this episode. I thought this was a really dope episode and it's leading to something interesting with the finale, but that's all I got in this video. Let me know your thoughts and feelings, predictions, anything. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe till next time. I'm out. Peace.